Okay, let's do a few videos breaking down some of my matches. I won two matches at the Brown Belt, Black Belt, BCJGF, Nogi Invitational, and I lost my third, and we're going to have a discussion on them. Now, I hadn't competed in over five years. I had only competed a few times at the Blue Belt uh, in 2016, and I had mixed success. I won some, I lost some, but it wasn't something that I personally really enjoyed, and it wasn't something that I felt that I really needed at the time. But now as I've reached Black Belt, I don't really have a lot of uh, people to push me because the students just aren't quite there yet and there's not a lot of people locally in the area and it's a bit of a pain in the ass to have to take like this two hour ferry ride over to the mainland to get some good competent training partners so i needed something to drive me to push myself further to get me in for those extra training sessions to do some conditioning to finally get myself in proper shape and so at this point now i feel quite hungry to compete but i'm not used to competing and so there's all this adrenaline and the nerves that I have to deal with. And the problem for me, the disadvantage that I'm at is that I'm going up against black belts and brown belts that are more used to competing because a lot of people started competing at their stages at white and blue and continued where now I have to get reacquainted to competing and I never even got used to it at the first point. So now I have to learn how to adjust this. And so that was the biggest thing for me going into this very first match as a black belt as I was going up against a talented brown belt who I know has competed locally a lot. And so having a game plan, and that's something that's so important that if you're looking to go compete, you're not going out there and just winging it. You have to have a plan. And so the plan for me with this one was, I know that at six foot five, I am really tall and I can attack ankle locks really aggressively because I have the ability to stretch somebody's leg out. And because of the control of an ankle lock grip where I wrap around 360 degrees around the ankle, it's very hard for somebody to pull out from that. And so it's a very safe attack for me to go for, to get a sweep. And then if the submission fails, it's unlikely for me to lose the leg that I'll be able to come back up on top with. And so that was the plan going into this, that as I was gonna be dealing with adrenaline and freaking out, I wanted to get that first match over with as fast as possible. And I told my coaches, and I told other students, I was like, I'm going for that ankle lock. I'm trying to end this in the first minute because I know that I'm going to, with the adrenaline kicking and I'm gonna be starting to lose my breath really fast. I'm gonna start getting very tired. So the goal is always to drop in and try and end this as fast as possible. So from here, as I'm going in, I've been working on wrestling. I'm mostly just looking for a collar tie here so I can get strong control of the head. So you can see when I drop that I, I don't just drop and pull guard. I am actually dropping them and pulling them down onto their face where they have to post their hand. I'm gonna get a significant kazushi, a break in their alignment where they're gonna be having a very difficult time defending my, uh, any of the leg attacks as they're coming in because they're trying to keep themselves balanced. Now, John, the brown belt that I'm going up against here, chooses to roll, which is not a bad idea here. And so you can see that I actually start to dig for a heel hook for a moment. The plan was always to go for an ankle lock, but because of how he rolled, there was significant heel exposure. I chose to start looking for that. But as I started getting the dig on that heel, I felt that because his legs are much shorter and because I still had an open circuit leg position with standard Ashy, I was like, you know, this is, I'm, I'm gonna risk losing this because with that heel, because I'm just shelving it, it's significantly easier for a heel to slip or for someone to pull their leg out and be able to completely extract from the situation. The heel hook is a more devastating submission, but the control that you get with that ankle lock grip around the leg, like I talked about, makes it extremely difficult for somebody to be able to get out from that. And so I chose to, as we started to roll there, I'm going back to the ankle lock. I wanna make sure that I secure this leg up. And I could reassess if I wanted to go for that heel hook, but go for the ankle lock and start testing those braking mechanics. Here, grab the head. You can see how he has to post on that elbow. He starts rolling over the shoulder. I look for that heel hook. Now I immediately go for that ankle lock grip. He's trying to hand fight there. So I swung my arm out. He's trying to hold onto the leg, but it's just not enough to stop the break mechanics that I had for that ankle lock. And so it was a quick verbal tap. And so I just wanted to make sure that he, he was okay. Cause I think I might even have felt like a slight pop in the ankle, but fortunately with an ankle lock, it's going to be the ankle that gets hurt rather than with a heel hook where we have a rotational based submission where that's going to go to the knee. So while it, it, it's unfortunate if there was any kind of damage to the ankle, it's not anywhere near as devastating as something like a heel hook as it's an extension based submission. So. The goal on that one, like I said, was to get 
in and out as fast as possible so that I could start calming myself down because that first match is extremely difficult. And that's the power of having a good game plan. I was working on different takedown options, but John trains wrestling and mixed martial arts. And so I knew that he was gonna be probably looking to push the pace standing and probably stay on top, not probably looking to pull guard. While I wanna test the wrestling and the Greco-Roman wrestling that I've been working on, I wanted to make sure that I was conserving energy. And so I chose to go what I would have thought would be the path of least resistance. So that I was gonna be able to play smart and have more energy for later on in the fights. And then by pulling guard in the first fight, even though I didn't end up doing it, it then starts to create a little bit more uh, variety where now they're, they would be expecting me to pull guard in the second fight and I have the option to start attacking with some more takedowns and pushing offense that way. So that then I'm able to throw them off and it's a bit harder to predict. I didn't do that, I just ended up pulling again, but that's the kind of stuff that you want to be thinking about when you're going to competition. So visualize that game plan, think it out, plan it out, drill it, and make sure that you push that.